In this tutorial, I'm going to go over controls on the Garmin G1000 system. Here we can see I've got the primary flight display up, and it's important to keep in mind that the front bezel for the primary flight display is going to be identical to the multifunction display. So if you know one, you'll know the other. The first thing we'll do is we'll notice that we've got the power button over here on the top left. You just push that button to turn on and off the system. Below that we have the volume for the navigation radios and if we turn that we can see over here the volume increases and decreases and if we press the knob inward we'll see that the box has the letters ID and so that's so that you can tune and identify it'll allow you to uh, listen in and if you hit the button again it goes back to the double arrow which will allow you to swap frequencies below that we've got the uh, frequency transfer key and that does what we said just earlier it allows you to swap between the frequencies and keep in mind that the frequency on the inside over here is the active frequency and this is the standby we can adjust these frequencies using the uh, dual nav knob the outside knob over here does the uh, larger digits and the decimal digits are done by the inside knob and if we press the center knob inward it will jump between selection for nav1 and nav2 next we've got the heading knob and that will adjust the uh, HSI down here and so when we turn it we can see that it adjusts it and the synthetic vision is turning along with it next we've got uh, below that We'll skip the uh, altitude or the autopilot buttons for now. Below that we've got the altitude knob. That allows us to adjust the altitude that we want to hold um, for the autopilot. And the outside, you can see here, it moves the bug and we can see it's at 3,000 feet and we can adjust it every 1,000 feet on the outside scale. And we have a fine adjustment on the inside scale for every uh, 100 feet. On the bottom here we've got our soft keys and we can hit the soft keys uh, depending on what's currently displayed and that will be shown in bright white letters and depending on what you hit the uh, soft key menu will change accordingly. If we migrate over here to the uh, right half of the display we've got another volume control knob this time it's for the comm radios and that works just as before and if you press and hold the COM button it will put on or off the auto uh, squelch button. Here we've got the frequency swap for the COM radios and the special feature for the frequency swap for the comms is that if you hold it down it'll go to the emergency frequency and put that in the active uh, area automatically. So here we see we've got 136.9 or 75. If I hold this down it'll go to 121.5 and switch over so let's test that out. And now you can see it went to 121.5 and it switched over. And we can adjust the standby com by using this com uh, knob. The outside one does the larger digits and the inside one does the finer digits for the decimal place and if we push the button in we'll switch between COM1 and COM2 that we want to adjust. Below that we've got the course and barometer settings. So here we can see we've got the barometer on the outside because the inches of mercury are changing for atmospheric pressure. And then we can see the course is on the inside knob. Right now this is in GPS mode so I'll change the CDI to a VOR and when I adjust the course now you can see the VOR needle is changing as I adjust the course and if this was actually tuned and it was getting a signal if you hold the course button it should auto center the VOR to point directly to the station. Below that we've got a cursor and if you look at the inset map over here if I press and hold the cursor I get a little mouse pointer 
and I can move the mouse pointer around using this joystick by going left and right and up and down. And I can use the outside to rotate this cursor and I can zoom in or zoom out. So I'll press and hold so the cursor goes off. Now if I adjust the range, I can zoom in and I can zoom out on the inset map. And that will work just exactly the same on the multifunction display. It'll zoom in and out the map. Here I've got the direct to button and that'll allow me to select an airport or waypoint that I want to go to directly. If I hit it again it goes away. I've got the flight plan button, FPL, below that. I've got the clear button which will clear or close the screen in some cases. Here I have the menu button which shows me the menu and you can see if I hit the clear button it went away. Here I have the procedures button and that will show you a procedure. So if I hit that we can see that we've got approaches, arrivals, and departures we can select. And then we've got the enter key below that. So let's that'll let, allow you to select something that's highlighted in a field. Um, below that we have the FMS knob and that allows you to switch through pages if you're on the multifunction display so you can switch between map views and selecting waypoints on the map for NDBs or airports or VORs. So it's all quite uh, simple and straightforward. And then finally we'll go back over here on the left to the autopilot buttons and this will work if you have the uh, GFC 700 autopilot system installed in the aircraft. We can hit the autopilot button, turn it off and on. We can see that we've got some fields up here that have activated and we also see the flight director. We can move the flight director up and down by hitting the up and down keys over here. We can uh, hit the flight director button and that will activate or deactivate the flight director only. And so what that will do is turn on the flight director for the pitch and roll axes. We also have uh, altitude or I should say autopilot selection modes. We've got the altitude here if we want to track altitude and the heading. We can do nav. We can do uh, vertical navigation, which is the VNV button. We can do an approach. We can do a back course, which is BC. We can do VS for a vertical speed mode. And then we also have this FLC button, which is the flight level change mode. So most of these buttons are fairly self-explanatory um, and not terribly difficult to use. And if we hit the autopilot button again, we can disengage the autopilot. And what you should hear when you turn the autopilot off is it'll usually make a, a loud beeping noise just to get your attention. So next, what we'll do is look at the audio control panel. Here we can see on the left we've got COM1 mic, COM2 mic, and COM3 mic. That just allows you to select which microphone uh, communication frequency you're going to talk and transmit on the microphone. And on the right we've got COM1, COM2, and COM3, which allows you to listen in on a particular radio. There won't be a COM3 on the Cessna 172 because it only has two communication antennas. Um, but you can listen to both COM1 and COM2 simultaneously. We've got also the COM1 half button, which is for split COM, but that will not be enabled in the 172. Neither will the tell button. Uh, the PA system allows you to address the passengers, but that will not be enabled in the Cessna 172. Here we've got the speaker button, and that allows you to uh, select or deselect the cabin speaker and then you should be able to hear the comm and nav radios in the cabin speaker of the aircraft. Below that we've got the uh, mute button and that's going to mute the uh, marker beacon receiver audio and if you press it again it will unmute it. Next we've got the uh, high sensitivity button and what that will do is increase the marker beacon receiver sensitivity and if you press it again it'll return back to normal. Here we can press to listen in on the DME. We can listen to the audio from NAV1 by pressing the NAV1 button. We can listen to audio from the ADF. We can also listen to audio for NAV2. We can have this auxiliary button, um, but it won't 
and it won't be active, it won't do anything, and it says no 172, but that button will be there. Uh, next, we've got the manual squelch button over here. Um, after that, we've got the play button over here, and that will play the last recorded audio. Next, we've got the uh, pilot button, and that will select uh, pilot intercom isolation. And if you press it again, it will deselect the pilot uh, isolation. Next, we've got the uh, co-pilot button. That does the same thing, only for the co-pilot. And here we've got the pilot and passenger knob. And if you press the button, it'll switch between volume and squelch control. Um, and you'll see the volume and squelch being illuminated when you do press it. And you can... Uh, rotate them to adjust those values and the manual squelch button has to be pressed if you want to uh, allow for a squelch adjustment using this knob and then we've got the uh, pass knob which will allow you to uh, adjust between copilot and passenger intercom volume and squelch values and that's the outside knob over here and then finally, we've got the reversionary mode, which is the big red one, down at the bottom. And that's in the case of an emergency if you have a failure on one of your glass panel displays. Say you lose the moving map or you lose the PFD. Whichever screen is remaining that is good, you'll get the reversionary mode by hitting that big red button. So that's all there is to it in terms of the buttons. They're, for the most part, straightforward, um, and it's really that simple.